Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Nichols and today I'm going to show you how to run a TLC or a thin layer chromatogram in order to separate components of a mixture. I'm going to run two TLCs side by side, one colored and one not. On the right is going to be some, a red and blue food dye and on the left will be just sort of like random organic compounds. I'm going to first start by setting up my TLC chamber which we put a piece of filter paper in. Uh, take some filter paper and cut it to size and uh, just cutting you know a few of the sides off I think will help you be able to see better. Stick that inside of a screw capped jar with a lid and push it down to the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing for the second jar. This time I'm going to cut all four sides. Why not? And that's really just so that when you stick it inside of the jar, it's not obscuring like your view that you can still see inside. All right, and now I'm gonna stick some liquid into these jars. So for the food dyes, I have a, a special mixture that's got some alcohols in it, a bit of ammonia, and I'm gonna measure out, in this case, 10 milliliters. It really depends on the size of your TLC jar, but for the size that I have, 10 milliliters is good. So I'll pour that in, and then I'm gonna close the cap, screw on the cap, and jostle around the chamber to wet the filter paper and start to get the whole thing uh, saturated with solvent vapors. The point of the filter paper is that as you run the TLC, liquid is gonna crawl up this plate. And if you don't have the chamber saturated with vapors, it might just evaporate and dry up as it goes, as it goes along. So by having that, that, whole, that uh, filter paper wet, it really uh, promotes a saturated environment and lets the TLC run, run uh, better. In the second one, I'm doing a six to one volume ratio of hexanes and ethyl acetate. Um, TLCs run with different solvents. It's something that you have to write down uh, because you can. You, that's a, a variable that you can change. So my chambers are ready. I'm gonna leave those off to the side. Uh, next, I'm gonna prepare my TLC plate. So the ones that I use are glass backed and they have a very thin layer of silica gel over the front side. So if I move this around, you might see some reflections. On the back is a, a glass, but on the top is, is more muted and that, that white part is the absorbent where all of the separation is gonna happen. You don't wanna use those, um, you don't wanna touch those plates like on the front, uh, you wanna touch them on the sides. Um, what I'm now doing is using a ruler and marking a line roughly a centimeter or so from the bottom. I'm doing this very lightly. You don't want to gouge the, the silica. Um, you know, don't make like a pit. You're just really, really lightly with the ruler drawing a faint line. Next, what I'm doing is marking off the lanes. You can do several lanes of um, or run several samples on one plate. Um, here, I'm just going to do two lanes per but really this plate could probably fit up to like maybe five or six. And I label it with whatever, whatever I'm doing. Again, don't use your pencil and don't gouge it. Just really lightly label them. Now I'm ready to stick on the sample. And here I have a diluted red food dye. I believe it was five drops of water to one drop of <clears throat> food dye. Um, you have to have dilute samples for, for TLC. Uh, I then have this capillary tube that's a very thin column of glass. It's open on both ends. And when I stick that into a liquid, it'll naturally draw up some liquid through capillary action. I then put that to the spot, um, that's the baseline. And I use sort of a quick down and up motion. Um, and you try to draw out a very, very small amount of liquid. This, this shouldn't be a, a, a huge spot. It should be at the most two millimeters in diameter. Um, what I then do is um, on a paper towel, I withdraw the, the rest of the um, liquid. And if I'm gonna use the same capillary tube again, I can't just go and stick it in another sample. It's gonna contaminate, so I need to rinse it out. 
For food dyes, since they're water soluble, I use a little vial of water and I'm rinsing it, rinsing it out with the water. You'll also find when you use these capillary tubes that you really need to get the liquid out of there quickly. Like don't have the liquid in the tube and then set it on the paper towel sideways. Sometimes you'll get air to go in there and then you just can't get it out again. So really you, you ad put the drop onto the uh, silica gel and then you immediately drain it out on the paper towel and you immediately rinse it. So only when it's completely empty should you set it down sideways. Here I've, I decided to rinse it twice just because it looked like there was still some red red color to the um, to the tube. All right, and then I decided I didn't like having these files open because that's a spill hazard. So I'm trying to close it with one hand, which is tricky. But now I move on and I'm gonna um, analyze some blue food dye as well. I can use the same capillary spotter as long as, as I rinsed it. And there's that blue sample. Um, you can also practice on a paper towel first to see if you get the, the right motion, but you do want small dots. And again, notice I'm draining it out quickly, not just setting it down because that's when air can get in there, but drain it out completely and then rinse it with the water. And do close the lid so that you don't spill. I'm now ready to stick my prepared TLC into the chamber. I open it up and uh, grab the TLC plate holding it by the edges. I can hold on to the top using forceps and then place that into the chamber. It should be that those that line where I put the, the sample is above the liquid. You don't want it actually drowning in the liquid. But I then close the lid and I let it do its thing. You don't want to pick it up and uh, look at it. Just let it go. Don't touch it. I'm now moving on to do the second TLC plate. This one is a colorless sample and much more common <clears throat> to have colorless uh, samples in organic chem. These ones are actually not mixtures. They are pure samples, um, but they are diluted as well. So I'm first going to put some in lane two a quick down and up motion. This one it has a is is diluted in a solvent that evaporates quickly, so the spot goes away. Um, I'm also going to rinse with acetone in this case, just because it's different than the food dyes. Um, but I do that a couple times, and notice everything drains a lot quicker when it's um, using acetone and different solvents. I'm now going to also put the same thing in spot four. Um, depending on the concentration of what you have, sometimes you want to spot it more than once. Um, you wait for it to evaporate on the line, but in this case, my concentrations are correct. I just needed one spot. And I rinsed both with acetone. And I put on the lids so that I don't make a spill. And I'm going to do the same thing where I open up my TLC chamber and I take my TLC plate that does have compounds on it, even though you can't see it. And I put that in the chamber and I let it run. So again, don't pick it up, just leave it there. Let it go until the solvent front, which is that wet mark that is traveling up until it gets close to the top. So I'm going to let this run and in the interest of time I am speeding up the video slightly but I wanted you to see side by side how the two different TLCs compare. So the solvent that I use on the right side for the food dyes is more polar and that tends to be more attracted to the silica gel and it clings more. So you end up having a slow elution or the, the plate runs slowly. Uh, this one it probably to complete will take probably 45 minutes. 
The one on the left was made with 6 to 1 hexanes ethyl acetate solvent, which is a lot less polar than the alcohols that I use for the food dyes. So when you have a less polar solvent, it's going to run much more quickly because it's not as attracted to the silica gel. This TLC plate probably is going to take about five minutes to run. As we also watch it, um, notice that the sample on the right with the food dyes, you're starting to see some color separation. So the spot on the right is a, a blue food dye, but you see that, that little hint of red, right? So that means that there is actually a red colored molecule that's present in the blue food dye. And sometimes they put that in there just to give it a certain color, you know, to give it a, a slightly different appearance. But on the right, you're seeing that we have some separation of colors. And that's the point of TLC is that you can separate components of a mixture. The solvent front on the TLC on the left is nearly to the top, maybe a centimeter or so from the top. And so I'm going to take it out. So you open up the jar, get your forceps and pull it out. So if your solvent is somewhat nonpolar, it's going to evaporate pretty quickly, which means you need to right away take a pencil and mark the top of the solvent line because it will disappear on you. And you can close the jar and you now have an eluded TLC plate.